talk about how you went about doing the research to find the picture and then tell the story. The reason why I chose that particular figure and to write that particular article about Imam Warathuddin Muhammad is because he is a, I would say, unsung figure in Black history, and he's famous and infamous. If I can kind of keep that unsung, famous, and infamous theme throughout the explanation. So when I say unsung, we don't realize, you know, cities like Philadelphia that have a dominant African-American Muslim culture there, we don't really understand, like, the cause of that. For many years, Imam Wadithin Muhammad was the minister of the Philadelphia Mosque, what was called Temple at the time. And so uh, when the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad transitioned in 1975, Wadithin Muhammad became the leader of the Nation of Islam. And so a lot of people don't know a lot about that history outside of Black Islam in America. But furthermore, those who are largely a part of Islam in America, they choose a side, whether they are pro-Imam Wadithuddin Muhammad or against Imam Wadithuddin Muhammad. So I guess we'll start off with the good. The reason why a lot of people, including myself, celebrate Imam Wadithuddin Muhammad is because he took the members of the Nation of Islam and acquainted them with the Arabic language, which is the language of the Quran. And he also took the uh, members of the Nation of Islam into the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is his tradition, which by and large wasn't a part of the study in the Nation of Islam. Not that it was forbidden, but it just wasn't featured. And so Imam Muhammad associating the Muslims with the five daily prayers, practicing Ramadan with the rest of the Muslim world. This had a lot of, in my opinion, a lot, a lot of positive points because it linked Black Americans with the larger Islamic community throughout the world. And we hear about this with Malcolm X with going to Mecca and his transformation, but, you know, that put to a period by the assassination. We don't really go any further about, you know, what would have happened with Malcolm X had he lived. So I think in a lot of ways, Imam W.D. Muhammad's work builds upon Malcolm X's transition to what we call Orthodox Islam or mainstream Islam and how Imam W.D. Muhammad, in the way that he went about doing it, there's also a downside to it. So the reason why I chose to write that article is to showcase that, yeah, there were a lot of positive things that he did, but at the same time, it was lacking a lot of the cultural empowering uh, language that the Nation of Islam was known for prior to him taking over in leadership. And so that's one of the things I wanted to highlight. And then him and Minister Farrakhan, who started the Nation of Islam again with the teachings of Elijah Muhammad in 1978, Wadith Deen Muhammad and him outwardly appear as polar opposites but you know human beings being human beings you know he had his community he has his community and so to write about how they were able to come together in a tone in the year 2000 at savior's day the savior's day celebration was something i think we needed to know because here in america we don't have sectarian violence like you'll hear about in the middle east with regard to islam even though the two camps are um, opposed ideologically, they still can settle on the Black experience and the fact they're both working on the benefit of Black America and Black Muslims and Muslims internationally as well. And so that's why I chose to write on that topic because myself, I don't necessarily have a negative opinion of Wadith Adin Muhammad, especially now that he you know, has passed away. I think we need to go back and study what he did to improve upon what he did and to correct any mistakes that may have occurred. Absolutely, and that, that's very insightful. And I just wanted to know if you could talk, just to explain for our readers, the significance of Savior's Day, what it means in the calendar and why this event was the opportunity for these gentlemen to atone. So Savior's Day is the celebration of the founder of the Nation of Islam, Wallace Farad Muhammad, who said that he was from the holy city of Mecca. And his birthday is February 26th, 1877. I see there was a question here, too, about Black History Month and how do I celebrate it? So it's known in the Black American circle that Savior's Day is the crowning event of Black History Month. 
So Savior's Day was also celebrated by Imam Wadhuddin Muhammad's community to commemorate the founding of the Islamic faith here in America. And Savior's Day, of course, is still practiced in Minister Farrakhan's Nation of Islam as well. The fact they both were holding separate Savior's Days for many years said a lot about the ideological difference where people's families, like even though this is a Black History Moment, people's families would have to make decisions about which one they were going to go to and what have you. So the fact that they came together for this display of unity and this coming together as brothers and two people who are part of the life and legacy, one biologically and one spiritually, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that meant a lot to both followers that we can continue this practice of brotherhood and not allowing the differences to get the better of us as we see in other parts of the world where you know Muslims are at odds with one another. Sure, so could you give us a sense today within the nation of the communities of which you're familiar, do folks see these, you know, after Savior's Day that these two communities are unified or in conversation with each other? I mean, how tense is that ideological difference? Today, there is still the practice of Salat al-Jum'ah, which is in the uh, Arabic world and in the larger Muslim world, the day of congregation. So it's not really a holy day, but that day is Friday, as is observed in the wider Islamic world. And so the nation of Islam does still practice Jumu'ah prayers, and so does the um, Mosque Cares community, which is uh, Imam Wadi Muhammad's community. They still practice Salat al Jumu'ah, and so sometimes you will see Nation of Islam members at the Jumu'ah, including myself, going to the Jumu'ah of Imam uh, Wadi Muhammad's community, and vice versa, having those members of his community coming to the Jumu'ah prayers in the Nation of Islam. And so, yeah, there is still an ideological difference primarily, you know, the Nation of Islam believes in an anthropomorphic God who, as I said before, Master Farad Muhammad, he's seen as the Mahdi, which is supposed to be the self-guided one who comes at the end of, at the end of the world, essentially. And then in Imam Wadafuddin Muhammad's community, the focus is largely on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, of 1400 years ago not so much the focus on Elijah Muhammad as the prophet and messenger. Although they still acknowledge the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as the founder of Islam in America and still practice things like do for self, practice things like how to eat to live and you know dressing and living modestly, the militancy isn't there as it is in the nation of Islam under the leadership of Minister Farrakhan. Wonderful. Thank you for explaining that critical distinction in, in how complicated those nuances are even today. Our readers will really benefit from being able to have that context from the time period that you wrote about and thinking about what it means now within those communities. That's really insightful. 